Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos Week 1. Alex, J- Alex Krobe, Jason Shellcross back again. Episode 28. I see you're sporting the Trubisky. Uh, He's sporting back, the tr- baby. Sporting the Trubisky jersey in honor of good old Mitch, named the week one starter, as if there Kissing was... Kissing babies, as if making there women was, fall in love with him. Yeah, and as if there was ever any doubt. Come on now. <laughs> My guy. Uh, so we're doing a week one preview. We're going to run down all the games and talk about things that we're looking for in all of them. Football's um, here. It starts. Football's like, here. It starts. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Hit the bell if you're on YouTube. Uh, all the support is much appreciated. And welcome to all of our new listeners. We've really taken off the last week or so. So how are we doing? doing I, I did an auction draft last night with my family, and they were giving me so much shit. And they're like, <laughs> so, so you have like the worst team. And um, so if we beat you, can we come on the pod and make fun of you for five minutes? I was like, sure, as long as it's entertaining. As you long as funny. it's entertaining, we'll you see how brave they it. are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so we're again, we're going through some week one previews right now. I think this is going to be our last Wednesday podcast. Um, we are going to be moving from uh, recording on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and posting Wednesdays and Fridays to instead recording Mondays and Wednesdays and posting our podcasts on Tuesdays and Thursdays because we need to post that uh, hot, hot waiver advice on Tuesdays. And so be on the lookout for that. We are going to be switching it up a little bit just to make sure we're giving everybody what they need when they need it. So, so much advice on whether to save your sauce or to spend your sauce. There we go. We're talking That's, nugs. Mm. We're t- talking little nuggets. So, yeah, we're every game we're touching on at least something today where, hey, what are we looking for this week and how will that impact basically the entire season? There's there's a couple things that I'm particularly looking for in every game just to try to figure out, like, was my preseason rankings good enough or were they right? Or did you do your job? Was I way off? Um, all of which is possible. Um, but the, these are really kind of the we're putting the rubber to the road now, right? We're actually able to see some of these things that are going on instead of just listening to coaches and, and different things like that. So um, first game, Thursday night game, Texans Chiefs this week. Um, the biggest thing, right, is is what is Clyde Edwards Hilaire going to look like with Daryl Williams yeah. um, in that backfield as as a rookie versus somebody who it seems like the Chiefs are relatively high on with Daryl Williams, um, at least coming out and publicly stating that they're looking to get both carries to at least start the season. Yeah, and they said that uh, they trust Daryl Williams in all phases of the game. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much he is on the field and how much he takes away from Clyde Edwards Hilaire. I think the most interesting uh, part of it is not just the the split and carries, but also who's getting the red zone carries yep. and who's lining up at the goal line. If that's Daryl Williams, then man, he's going to be a steal for a lot of people that got him at the end of drafts. So. That's the thing, though, with their offense is I don't I still don't know if they even have a well, I'm, I'm sure they have a goal line package. But I mean, even still, a lot of their stuff is just letting Mahomes be in shotgun and figure it out. Right. Absolutely. Just, just spread it out. And if they run the ball up the middle, that's one thing. But it, it seems like they're more inclined to just let Mahomes do his thing. So I don't know how much the goal line carries is really going to matter um, or if you'll be able to tell um, depending if they're running hurry up or whatever uh, is going on. But yeah, definitely something to look out for. Um, the The other side, um, or I guess I should say the other team in that game with Texans, I'm really looking forward to seeing one, can Will Fuller stay healthy for uh, one consecutive <laughs> game? And then one two consecutive <laughs> game. <laughs> And then trying We're gonna to get that ticker f- going on the bottom of our podcast days <laughs> without a Will Fuller hamstring tweak. Will Fuller has not been injured in four days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like like the workplace. Uh, nobody's been injured here. Thing that'd be that'd be pretty funny. Exactly. Um, 
And then, um, so can Will Fuller stay healthy? And really what I'm looking forward to is what, how are they going to deploy Brandon Cooks? Uh, he He's really the guy that I think is going to be the better of the two receivers there. He's been a top 15 fantasy wide receiver for the last five years, last year being the exclusion of that. And I really hope that Brandon Cooks kind of balls out the first week here and kind of reminds everybody um, who he has been historically. Uh, I also want him to stay healthy, too. So those those are the the two main things in that game. Do you do you have anything else to add? No, I really I think you hit the nail on the head here there with uh, both teams. Uh, the the things I wrote down for for Kansas City uh, again, just trying to monitor that snap percentage, goal line split. Houston gave up the seventh most points to running backs last year with twenty one and a half points per game to the position. So somebody's going to have a good game for that Kansas City in that Kansas City backfield. Um, yeah, and 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 he, um, the Chiefs gave up a lot on the ground last year too. Teams were yeah. trying to play ball control against them so you're kind of getting to see what david johnson is made out of on thursday yep. night which which could be interesting see how they deploy duke johnson potentially is he um, on the field the, on third down or is it david johnson a three down back so right yeah so you're you're gonna be able to tell a lot just from that first game and be like ah so it football is back so excited all right <laughs> sunday morning jets bills does anybody care about this game uh, <laughs> i do you got Devin okay. singletary versus zach moss here i you could have a potential free starting running back going at the end of drafts right now for people that haven't drafted or are drafting tonight in zach moss um they're already saying that Devin singletary very well could lose his job to the rookie so i am actually looking forward to seeing what that snap percentage is and the the red zone goal line uh, carry split um and then also you have uh what the the jets i mean d- it does uh does levy on bell really become that three down back does frank gore steal some carries I don't know. I mean, would it surprise me, you if they just put Frank Gore in the backfield like the entire game and split <laughs> Lev Bell out wide? Like, no, would it really it surprise wouldn't. you if they did Absolutely that? Not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Absolutely uh, not. I think the one thing I am excited for with the Jets offense is to see what uh, Chris Herndon's and Jamison Crowder's workload is given the state of the rest of that receiving core, specifically Herndon, because like that receiving core is really questionable. And Sam yeah, Darnold I mean, loves to right. charge loves to check you're, it down you're looking at Brashad Perriman who showed up for a couple couple snacks last year at the end of the end of the year who did nothing in Baltimore for years um and all of a sudden they're like hey you're gonna be our wide receiver too and he couldn't get on the field for yeah. years coming out of college so um yeah the, the only other thing the other thing that I can think of with this game I want to see if the Bills defense is ready for prime time here um they really have expectations in Buffalo for the first time in a while uh after they blew the playoff game last year uh, with the Texans. Um, but, you know, Josh Allen finally has expectations. Um, will they be able to come out and just blow a team out that they should probably destroy? I, I That's what I'm looking for. Um, to your point, Bill's running backs. We'll see what happens with them and then who steps up in the passing game levy on bell might have 10 catches or he should have 10 catches because they have nobody else to throw the ball to i do think sam darnold is a good quarterback and i do think that adam gase is a terrible coach so that just <laughs> sucks for him well the other thing i think that's semi-interesting is how how hot do the bills come out of the gate this season given the easiness that is their opening schedule i mean starting against the jets does Josh Allen, like, does he score one rushing touchdown or two? <laughs> is he able to get the ball to Stefan Diggs deep? Like, the guy is a monster on uh, deep route running. So I'm interested to see how that game shakes out, even though it's, you know, m- um, one of the least exciting or lesser exciting games, potentially. Jets Bills always has a defensive s- touchdown scored in it. Um, My money would be on the Bills. All the time, like there's always <laughs> one touchdown scored uh, by the defense. And I always feel like they play like 13 to seven games, too. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that'll be more interesting than it might be. Um, all right. Packers Vikings. Woo. NFC NFC North. There we go. Um, I'm looking at who's going to be the wide receiver two on both teams. Yes. Um, 
that's that's like the the main event. So your boy Lazard is Justin Jefferson going to be on the field more for the Vikings, or is it going to be Ola B C Johnson that we highlighted a couple episodes ago? Um, I just don't. Um, I, I don't know. That's that's probably what I'm looking forward to. I, w- I want to see if Devontae Adams is going to have 200 targets this year. Easily. Um, Book it. It's, poss- it's possible. Um, and then what what is the Packers backfield usage look like? Um, it sounds like Aaron Jones is headed towards a contract extension, which is somewhat surprising. Um, and he's a stud, just, man. No, I know he's really good, but you go out and you spend draft picks on on Dylan, Dylan, and you still have other what Williams, right? Uh, is still there. Jamal, so, yeah, is still there. Yeah, so I I want to see what that backfield is going to look like. Maybe again, Aaron Jones is more of a receiving threat, and they they use AJ Dylan as more of a battering ram. We don't know. Um, so yeah, it, it's all about the wide receiver twos. Looking at snap percentages, looking at target share. Yeah, they've said that uh, that uh, Aaron Jones will um, have more of a command of the backfield to start the season as A.J. Dillon becomes acclimated to the offense. Obviously, you know, preseason is going to put him behind a little bit. So it wouldn't surprise me to see if he is that really three down back, at least for the first month um, or so of games. Uh, I'm also interested, you know, you talked about to see who's the wide receiver two on each team. I'm interested to see. Who's second in targets on both teams? Because I don't think it's necessarily is going to be a wide receiver. I wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Jones had the second most targets uh, for the Green Bay Packers offense. I think they're going to move him all over the field. Aaron Rodgers loves the guy, and we know he's not exactly thrilled with the rest of the, that receiving core. So don't be surprised if Aaron Jones has a nice little target share as well. Yeah, and I mean, do we even know who the Packers tight end is? I have no idea off the top of my head. So <laughs> you don't want him anyways. It's fine. Yeah, no, you don't want him. All What's right, next? Eagles and the Washington football team. Ooh. Um, J- JD McKissick was named the starting running back today um, by Washington. So does that temper your expectations between your boy, Mr. Gibson, and Bryce Love? No, it's, an- it's the Antonio Gibson show. I think they're being cute. I'm not worried about JD McKissick at all. Really? I don't know. Okay. I think I think they drafted Antonio Gibson to give him as much of the starting gig that he can handle. I just I don't I don't know. Or do you think JD McKissick is all of a sudden gonna be a, a two, three down running back? No. Again, I don't want any of I, I'm not well, yeah, owning any, any, any anyway. of in any of those players. I, that's that's the only interesting thing about the Washington football team for me is there. I think they're still going to be terrible and you don't want a bad running back on a bad team. So good, good, good luck to all you uh, Antonio Gibson owners. Uh, And then Eagles wide receivers. um, I think we can go ahead and pencil Deshaun Jackson in for three catches, 165 yards and two touchdowns week one. And then he'll hurt his hamstring next week. Um, Otherwise we're, we're kind of looking at, Hey, what, uh, what do their line lineup consist of? Is it mostly the Zach Ertz and, and Dallas Goddard show? Um, and just trying to figure out how how usable is Miles Sanier, Sanders? Are they going to go Boston Scott more? Um, that's it's not how healthy super is interesting. Miles Sanders to me, it's how healthy is Miles Sanders after only doing shadow drills and whatnot for the last week or so. Hopefully, he comes out and he's ready. What? What's a shadow drill? Oh, is, like, is he like boxing his shadow on yeah, the sideline? Yeah, okay. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like walking through what you should be doing. Okay. So is he following his shadow or is his shadow, shadow following him? His shadow follows him just like I follow you wherever you go. Okay. Interesting. Sli- slightly creepy. Uh, <laughs> Bra- Browns and Ravens. Uh, the... Mark Ingram's value in all these in all of the drafts that I've done is so low after being a, a RB one last year. Um, and how does J.K. Dobbins fit into this offense? He's going to have a significant role per Harbs. You think right away per Harbs. Harbaugh said literally game one significant role. So I don't know what that means. I don't know. I have no idea. Like 
Mark Ingram, I think, is looking at a split here for sure. And I wouldn't be surprised if Dobbins was out wide or whatever. Like, I think the guy's going to be on the field. Okay. I'm, well, I think Dobbins is going to be all over the field. I think the people that drafted J.K. Dobbins are going to be ecstatic after week one. And, or, yeah, certainly the first right. month. Like, the guy's just going to keep taking over role. Uh, and my only other thing I'm looking forward to out of the Ravens, obviously I'm looking forward to, forward to that uh, Lamar Jackson rushing touchdown at some point, that explosive yeah. run. But for me, the real thing, like my question outside of the JK Dobbins, Mark Ingram split is can Marquise Hollywood Brown actually start to establish himself as a legitimate wide receiver one? Can he make the big plays and can he really take advantage uh, of the matchup against the Browns? Yeah, because well, the box is always going to be full. Yeah, and the guy's like one of the top so, five fastest in the league. Yeah, you can blow. He can blow the top off of defenses, and I I would love to see him start doing that, especially being an owner of him. Are you uh, Are you excited at all for the Browns' offense? Are you interested to see what that Chubb Kareem Hunt split looks like? So the Browns actually extended uh, Kareem Hunt today as well, um, or yesterday when this is dropping. Yeah, um, all the news. So that's interesting. I It's got to be close to a 50-50 split, right? Are they going to just run run people into the ground? And then can Baker actually run a play-action pass and, and be hitting Jarvis and Odell on some deeper routes? And it'll be interesting to see what they're doing with Hooper, too. Yeah, um, is, does he live it, up to that paycheck or not? Yeah, they gave him a ton of money, so they they got to use him. Uh, so yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm looking for: is what what percentages are they going uh, in the backfield, and how many times is Baker going to throw, and does he look better than last year with act, with an actual real coach? Yeah, absolutely. All right, our next game is uh, Colts Jaguars. <laughs> Another yeah. nasty one. Indianapolis at. Jacksonville, Indianapolis. I'm honestly, I'm looking forward to out of this game. Who is taking over for Lenny Leonard Fournette gone. Uh, Indianapolis did give up the fifth fewest points to running backs. You're looking at James Robinson, Devin, Devine or Devin Ozigbo and Chris Thompson. Uh, as the three <laughs> running backs potentially getting carries here. James How Robinson. Did they Leonard Fournette. It's unbelievable. Uh, I know. And Devonta Freeman really like, had crazy. a workout with them, didn't get signed. And then they list James Robinson as the week one starter. He's 5'10, 225 <laughs> out of Illinois State. What's up, Illinois State? He's an undrafted free Harvard agent. Harvard of rookie. the Midwest is what they say. He was like the FCS leader in rushing. So, I mean. All three are expected to see snaps. I actually picked up James Robinson in a couple deeper leagues in case he uh, he does look legitimate because they said the way he looked in uh, summer training camp figured into letting go of Fournette. So uh, does hey, that? Hey, Mr. Robinson, I heard your son can run the ball. I just <laughs> you're oh, not ex- yuck, are you man. interested in this game at all? What about how Ty looks on the other side for the Colts? That, that's what I was going to say is. Philip Rivers has never had like a speedy, like shifty guy. That's his wide receiver one. He's always had the the six four, uh, throw the ball up sort of thing. And what about Keenan Allen? He no, like Keenan Allen's one of the best route runners in the league, but he's okay. not. He's not he's six just four. Big, he's just bigger. He's yeah. bigger than Ty Hilton is, or at least he seems like it. Whether or not he is, I don't. I don't really actually know that. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I want to see T.Y. stay healthy for a full year because I still think he is one of, you know, the top 15 wide receivers in the NFL when he's healthy and um, isn't having leg issues. But those have been popping up the last couple of years. So I really hope that he can shake those. And then I want to see the the DJ Shark and Gardner Minshew uh, connection Vibe. just mm. love Blossom into something amazing. Just play romantic music right there. Oh, yeah. Get that vibe going. Yeah. Chark's going to be. There's nobody else. I mean, there's nobody else. There's nobody else. Jacksonville offense. The one thing I think probably the biggest, maybe the biggest thing for the whole game that we haven't even talked about is uh, how much or how fast does uh, Jonathan Taylor take over that offense? Uh, What's that split with that carry split 
between Marlon Mack and Taylor. Does Taylor get any third down work or is that all Naheem Hines? So I think that that's also something that we're going to be monitoring going into week one. Can't you can't you just feel that the, the Jaguars are going to win? No, well, <laughs> well done. Um, I just feel like the Jaguars are going to win this game. I just oh, it wouldn't shock me just because they've shed like so many people. You know, the yeah. Colts are already looking past them. Yeah, I just for whatever reason, I just have the feeling and we can revisit this next week. But like Minshew is just going to pull something out of his backside and it's just going to be beautiful. Um, I would take the <laughs> I would take the under on this game um, probably and just but yeah, what what Minshew just do whatever he does and hopefully it goes to DJ Chark uh, Raiders Panthers. Oh, Interesting. Uh, Either the one of these. Look, it's happened. First it's LA ha- game or uh, Las Vegas game, I should say. It's happened to Alex and I both already. We have completely missed on quarterbacks in drafts. And who are we stuck starting? Like Teddy Bridgewater, Ugh. Derek Carr are both very viable streaming options, I feel like, in week one. The Panthers gave up a ton of points to the quarterback position last year. Really kind of a depleted offense. And Vegas, I mean, you could say the same for them. So I'm if you're stuck in a pinch... I would be okay starting either of these QBs week one. And also, uh, oh man, I got some. So we're also working on our week one rankings. You are going to hate some of them. Um, I am very are you, shocked. Are you, talk, are you talking about me or are you talking yes. about our listeners? No, yes, you personally. Okay. Uh, guess where I have Kyler Murray ranked. Uh, probably like 15 at 15. Cause he's at yeah. San Fran. He's actually, I ranked him immediately behind Derek Carr at 14. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, I don't want anybody facing the 49ers defense when they're healthy and at full speed and like their yeah. front four is so nasty that, yeah, I, I don't blame you at all for that. I'll so, probably have him down there. Our next podcast. So the way that we want to set this up eventually is, uh, our Monday pods will be, uh, sort of weekend reviews, or actually they'll be posted Tuesdays, weekend reviews plus waiver advice. And then our Thursday podcasts will be like ranking discrepancies and talking about, you know, different games or any interesting things that we are looking forward to over the weekend. So I'm looking forward to our next podcast because we're going to be doing some deep dives on into our weekly rankings and talking about where you and I differ on players. So just yeah, to plug the, that. The, the, the Panthers offense, though, with... DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel and Robbie Anderson and a capable quarterback (laughs) and capable quarterback who's incredibly accurate or has been historically. And you still have Christian McCaffrey. Like I, you you have a brand new coach to the NFL who's run dynamic offenses in college. Like I just want to see, and, and all three of the, of the Panthers wide receivers are, explosive so they could be running short routes and if teddy bridgewater actually hits them in the hands they could they could bust it to the house so i'm i'm just excited to kind of see teddy bridgewater's being back as a full-time starter after that horrific leg injury for the vikings a couple years ago second coming potential comeback player of the year my only question with him is and that offense is are they able to keep up the cmc workload and target mm-hmm. load that truly set him apart last year by like six points a game over running back two. He'll have to have fewer targets. I would think that, that he would have gonna to push the ball downfield to his to his talented wide receivers a little bit more. Uh, and then for me with the Raiders, is Darren Waller still their best wide receiver? Uh, he was last year. Um, and I, I know that they drafted Ruggs and Hunter Renfro's back. But and they Brian I, Edwards there too. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, is Waller still one of the top guys? Like last year, he wouldn't have been because they went into it with Antonio Brown. And then that was the, you know, shit show that it ended up being. And then yep. they really left them shorthanded. And I think Waller almost became the guy. But then now you actively put in quality wide receivers uh, in a place to succeed this year. I would not be surprised if Waller maybe took a little bit of a step back. Um, the only other thing I'm looking for out of the Raiders is, is Josh Jacobs a three down back? But I think that'll be answered in week one. Yep. You'll, you'll know right away is if he has more than like five targets, you're going to be 
just so salivating happy. over that. Yeah. That's if, if he gets five targets week one, I feel like that's like the magic number where if you can lock in 80 targets for him during the year that you would just be like, all right, here we have and go. And he, he's an RB one draft pick value. Extreme. Yep. Uh, Bears Lions. Uh, I'm looking forward to this for, for my boy, Mitch, who always uh, tends the ball out against the Lions for whatever reason. Um, and I think that's the main reason why he was actually announced the starter. Also, we have no idea if Montgomery is healthy or who's going to be running the ball for yeah. the Bears. Um, so, you Patterson, know, baby. A potential pickup and stream option um, this week is just try to if Montgomery's not going to play and I don't know how he'd be healthy if he does um, just try to figure out who the Bears are going to be giving the ball to um, out of their backfield maybe it is Cordero Patterson but just something to pay attention to and then me personally I want to see how many times Galladay gets targeted um, hopefully hopefully Stafford uh, me being a Bears fan I hope Stafford sucks but the <laughs> Galladay the Galladay <laughs> owner in me also wants to see Galladay start out the season strong with like a you know, six for 90 in a touchdown line or something like that to to continue to be a, a wide receiver one this year. Definitely doable. I think the workload is going to be there for him this year. Stafford and him were on a huge pace, amazing pace last year before Stafford went down after week eight. Um, I, I, uh, I'm really excited to see what Galladay can do in a full season with him. Yep. Um, the only other thing is what the Lions signed AP. So... You have AP, DeAndre Swift, and carry on, and it's just going to be like, who is the starting running back? I believe that they have already come out and said carry on might start week one. <laughs> so I yikes. I don't know. Again, don't draft any Detroit Lions running backs. They've <laughs> always been bad. They will always be unless bad. you get them for free. Don't do it. Like unless you get them for free or it's, if yeah. it's dynasty, obviously DeAndre Swift like is is a great dynasty pick but still wouldn't do it <laughs> he's like, just stay away uh seahawks falcons little little it seems odd like i wouldn't expect these guys to be playing week one just kind of seems seems weird again west coast going to east coast here um i want to see todd Gurley get back to having 20 to 25 touches and and what they do um with him and being a receiving threat and i i I just want to see Todd Gurley look is like Todd Gurley again. Back? Right. Yeah. What's that? What's that split? If there is one, can the knee hold up? And then also on the same offense, Ridley or Julio, who has the better game? Yep. Uh, and then see Seahawks run to pass ratio. Just want to see if they're going to loosen the purse strings on, on Russ a little bit. Um, I think they're going to throw plenty for DK and, and lock it to be viable. Um, but uh, yeah, I just, I would like to see them throw more, but if they run the ball more, Chris Carson's going to be a beast. He's said he's healthy and please don't give the ball to Carlos Hyde. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to this matchup for Russ. I have him ranked as a top three quarterback this week. Uh, I think he, he could absolutely go off for me. What I'm looking forward to in this game is the target share between DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. And really, who who's able to come out on top there? Who, who of any of either of them is targeted in the red zone and uh, in in the end zone ultimately? So there you go, uh, Dolphins Patriots. For me, it's Woo! it's running it's Fitz running magic backs. baby running running backs for both teams. Uh, the Patriots cut Lamar Miller over the weekend, so um, S- start up fire up Sony Michelle. Damn right, he's back. He's and- gonna be great. They cut Lamar Miller. And Damian Harris is injured. Like yep. it's the Sony Michelle show. I think he, I would be shocked if he didn't have a hundred yards rushing and a touchdown. Wow. Shocked. I Or flirting with it. Like, or maybe cam has the touchdown, I guess. Yeah. I, I was going to say maybe 50 to 75 yards or 75 yards in a score. I think for Michelle wouldn't is not out of the question. I would Do not think, be surprised to see cams goal line kind of get tampered taken. a little bit. Well, no, just trying to keep him healthier and, and take yeah. a little less punishment at the goal line. Um, and so we're back to the traditional Sony Michelle, the first two downs. James, James White, White comes in on third down. Sony Michelle runs up the middle. James White's back in for a passing down. And I think that's more of just we're back to what we thought it was going to be three months ago when we started this. And 
we've we're just we're just back to square one. We've come and, full circle. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'm back in Anthony Michelle this year. Um, I hope he's good. And then what what is the bread man Matt Burita and Jordan Howard split look like? Um, I I think you take the under on this game as well um, because I. The Patriots lost a lot of people uh, on their best fantasy defense ever last year, um, and the Dolphins a lot of opt outs. And the Dolphins secondary is so much better that I think both teams are just going to try to run the ball, and I, I think it's just going to be a low scoring game. This they've, they've Seven, gone seventeen fourteen. This. I would not be surprised. Yeah, I uh, I don't really have a whole lot to add here. Um, I guess the one thing I'm on the lookout for for the Miami offense, aside from the Howard Brita split, is does Preston Williams pick up where he left off before he was injured last season? He actually had a, a better receiving line or at least equal to Devontae Parker before getting hurt and thus leading to Devontae's explosion. You do have Fitz Magic uh, starting at the quarterback position to start the season. Um, and then lastly, like what does that Gesicki target share look like too? So great sleeper tight end. Fitzmagic was really hammering him at the uh, second half of last season. Uh, other afternoon games, uh, Chargers, Bengals. Anything you're interested in that? Uh, how mediocre does Tyrod Taylor look? Um, I Maybe the, the running back share split between Eckler and Justin Jackson. Um, not particularly there. Outside of that, what I will say for the Bengals is I ranked them right next to each other, A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd. I'm interested to see who Joe Burrow picks as his favorite. He said that he has a an incredible connection with Boyd, so My guy. hopefully that comes to fruition in week one. I've got him a lot of places because he's going in like the seventh, eighth rounds right now still, which is, I think, a huge value for Tyler Boyd. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. I, I just want to see Joe Burrow like... Light kinda, it up. Yeah, I just want to see him be really good. Um, yeah. I, I always root for rookie quarterbacks to be really good. So I, the, the NFL thrives on having good quarterbacks. And so the more of them that the NFL has, the better the product is shitty quarterbacks, shitty to watch. So I, I hope he's good. And I say that as a bears fan. So, uh, Cardinal <laughs> Cardinals, 49ers. Um, we touched on it briefly. I want to see the 49ers defensive speed. Um, and I, you're basically strength versus strength, right? I want to see the Arizona offense try to figure out how to get around the speed of the 49ers defense. Yeah, I think Kyler Murray is going to be harassed early and often and might be running for his life occasionally. Uh, we talked about how he was the uh, he led all quarterbacks in most sacks credited to him. Uh, last year, I wouldn't be surprised if you might have one or two of those uh, against the 49ers defense. It's just such an incredible D. Um, and then I guess the only thing I'm really looking for out of the 49ers defense, obviously we know Kittle's going to be that number one target given their injury issues. Does Debo find a way to play one and two? What is that running back backfield split? How involved is Jarek McKinnon? Does he is he actually on the field? Maybe given their receiver injury issues, maybe McKinnon does find his way on the field. So that's my looking forward to or to monitor for the Niners. I mean, for the Cardinals, I don't I know what that offense is. The only thing I'm really monitoring is like, is Kyler Murray able to develop a chemistry with DeAndre Hopkins and keep DeAndre a wide receiver one perennial wide receiver one. That's that's really all I'm able to do, especially all I'm looking forward to, especially against a top tier defense like the Niners. Yep. Hopkins also signed an extension today uh, Woo! For, for what that's worth. I believe he is the highest paid non quarterback in the NFL based on oh. average salary. Um, all right. Bucks and Saints. Um, oh, I'd boy. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, if you had to guess what the over under for points is in this game, what would you say? Is it 50? It's 40 it's 49 and a half, which is really 55. low. 55. Yeah, the last year their their two games were 55 points and 51 points and the over under is 49 and a half. I like I the would over. I smash the over. Um Tom Brady's going to be out here throwing bombs. Like Yeah, I I there's no way that's staying under 50 points in in my opinion. Um I I'm not there's really nothing to break down. I just I want to see two high powered offenses just explode. The only thing I think that might be worth monitoring is that Bucks backfield. Does Lenny actually take over? 
Is it Rojo to start the season? Who's getting the goal line carries? Who's in on third downs? That's that's really all I'm interested in. Yeah, I don't think you're going to know anything for like a month in that backfield, honestly. It's it's something worth monitoring, but you're just not going to, until Fournette actually can see a playbook for longer than a week and a half, like you're not going to know anything, in my True. opinion. True. Um, but the value at the goal line, I think in that high-powered offense might be real, though. If, it, if they do yeah. just say, screw it, Lenny, go get go get two yards. And, you know, then I think that there's value there. Yep, no doubt. Uh, Sunday night game, Rams, Cowboys. Again, I want to see offenses explode. The over-unders 51 and a half. Um, So like the over there, too, um, I want to see how many three wide sets the Cowboys run to see if CeeDee Lamb's on the field enough to make him fantasy viable. Um, And then I want to see Cooper Cup, Robert Woods establish them both as high end wide receiver twos, uh, low end wide receiver ones. And then really is Tyler Higby for real? Um, Was that was that at the end of last year? Is he going to be targeted that much? Is he going to put up numbers like he was at the end of the year? And does that make Jared Goff a solid QB one this year? if, If you have all three of those guys really percolating. Yeah, hundred percent there. That's really what I'm looking at. Outside of that, um, I'm excited to see if or who potentially starts to uh, pull ahead in the running back situation for the Los Angeles Rams. Um, I think Cam Akers is by far and away the most talented of the three backs there that are going to be splitting carries. I just don't know how long it will take or if uh, uh what McVay will be stubborn enough to actually let Cam Akers take over. So we will see on that. But yes, I think uh, I'm interested to see what the the target share split is, like you said, between Woods and Cup, uh, who's getting the red zone looks. I mean, tr- historically, Cooper Cup's been the guy in the red zone. So yep. he could be a huge value if that keeps up. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, is Higby a flash in the pan or is he here to stay? Because he would be a huge value uh, for people if he actually continues the to light it up like he did at the end of last season. And the annual week one Monday night football games, plural. Um, first one, yeah. Steelers Giants. Uh, Ooh, over Steelers four, are going to smack the Giants. 47 and a half like the over there. Really? Um, big Big Ben is back. Um, I want to see go G- under. Yeah, I I think it's like again. 28 to 10. You just think the Giants are only scoring 10 points? I do. At home against the Steelers defense, yes. Maybe 13, 17 max. Like, I I would be shocked. If the Danny Steelers Jones, defense is so good. I know, but if Danny Jones comes out with his full assortment of weapons and puts up 21, 24 points, you're looking at a monster year from from that offense potentially. If they could, yes. If Daniel Jones can do it against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, they can do it. He can do it against any defense because they are just as good as any other defense in the league. So maybe that is something to monitor. Does Danny Jones actually look like a QB one given his full assortment of weapons? Yep, and and who's the wide receiver to to go pick up? Golden Tate's pretty much going undrafted in a, in a lot of leagues, and if if he shows up as as a viable slot receiver, um, you know, could be a an okay flex player um, this year. I would also say that um, Mike Tomlin came out with the running back situation and said, "Hey, we have a bunch of talented guys. We want to get them all carries um, or at least touches in some concern." I don't know if I buy that. I think they're just going to ride James Conner to the ground. The last year was contract. Hundred percent, James Conner show all the way. For me, it's more of a target share split question between Juju and Deontay Johnson. Um, I think Juju, I think, is probably going to end up being the wide receiver one in this offense. I'm just excited for what I believe Deontay Johnson could pull off in this offense. Uh, hopefully him and Ben do develop a connection. Yep. And to just to see how many targets Eric Ebron gets, because um, Ben's always, always love throwing to, to his tight ends um, and Ebron's not getting drafted. So that's somebody after week one that potentially should be looking at it from a waiver wire standpoint. If you're desperate. Um, yeah. If, if you did not draft a tight end, essentially um, last game um, Titans Broncos Monday night, late night. Um, I'm planning on sleeping. Um, yeah. I'm not super thrilled about this. Like I already know. I mean, 
it's going to be Derrick Henry versus Drew Locke and assortment of things like Philip Lindsay evidently has done so well in summer camp. They're saying that he has pushed a, what for what could be a 50 50 split or more because Philip Lindsay has just looked that incredible this summer. So that does me, not surprise us whatsoever. No, but I mean, he could represent some value for people that drafted him if he's able to get that many touches. Um, so he could become a, you know, a flex viable player. Other than that, it's like with the addition of all of the weapons that they've added at, re- at the receiver position over the summer and Noah Fant coming into his second year, is Cortland Sutton able to maintain his obscene target share that was like 25 plus percent? Like, it does he maintain that target share and keep himself established as a high end wide receiver two, potentially low end wide receiver one? Um, they're gonna need to score in this game. I think Derrick Henry is is gonna find the end zone at least once. Like, so I agree. Yeah, and and year two of the Vic Fangio uh, defense in Denver, um, and just you know trying to put together uh, a good defense side of the ball. He's always coached really good defenses, whether it was for the 49ers or the Bears. Um, so I just, yeah, I want I want to see if the Broncos defense has improved substantially to be a, f- a viable fantasy defense, even though they play Kansas City twice, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I um, mean the big question there then is going to be whether or not they can bottle up AJ Brown. Yep. And whether AJ Brown is going to have more, more targets this year. Um, yeah, he needs you know, yeah, right. If, if he's getting 10 to 12 targets uh, week one, that's a pretty good sign for him, uh, especially if you own him. Um, so those are the games, man. I'm looking forward to week one for sure. Um, it's feel like, Drafting is here. I got a couple Drafting's more tonight. Drafting's done for a lot of people. I, I, drafting's yeah. done for some people. Again, wait as long as you possibly can. A lot's changed. Um, it's it's the best time of the year. Happy Fall, week one, everybody. Fall's here. It's a little chilly. You can start doing bonfires and football <laughs> and <laughs> roast some marshmallows. Yeah. The, Wonderful. You can, you can cuddle with your significant other because it's not like too warm anymore. Oh, there you go. Or you can cuddle all the time if you if you're into that. Well, yeah, but like if it's like warm and sticky, then you don't want to. Okay. Well, well, I right. I do have a little bit of <laughs> newsy stuff. That's the best newsy. I love that newsy stuff drop. Um, newsy stuff. Um, Alex, I spent the weekend driving to three or four different hardware stores and doing several hours of construction to put up uh, overhead lights above our patio uh, for my uh, soon to be wife. Now, um, the 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 driving factor was that I could not get my hands on a four by four by 16 piece of wood and i just want to know what lengths have you gone to get your hands on some good wood uh, so when i met my wife i was on a mission trip and uh i'm an accountant and <laughs> so okay. i'm not really i'm not really a builder or a carpenter i guess is probably the, the correct term and so when they like they give you like a binder and they're like, Hey, here's how you build this porch or like little stairwell thing. I cannot do this uh, okay. objectively. And my wife was, well, this girl was in the group who turns out to be my wife now. And so she's inside with some of the, the youth painting and, and things like that. And I'm left outside trying to figure out. So when you say a four by four by 16, um, a four by four by 16 is not actually four by four by 16. It's like 3.75 by 3.75 by 15.75 or, or something like that. And so I'm measuring the wood <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, these, bad. these mother effers miscut the wood. This isn't four by four. It doesn't work. This doesn't oh, work. Oh no. So... That's how me and my wife met, and uh, I still don't know how to do any of that stuff. Well, it's a good thing you're an accountant. 
All right. Uh, if you found <laughs> if you found today's episode enlightening uh, or entertaining, please again hit that uh, like or subscribe button. Let us know what you're looking forward to most uh, and monitoring in week one. Please comment below. What we are on our way to a thousand for? downloads this month. We've had more than a thousand downloads in the last thirty days, but we've never had it in any one single month. So we are. We lift off, baby. We're on the way up. Thank you for everybody that's liked, commented, subscribed on any platform. And uh, yeah, um, we're going to transition to the social media page. And we are at the FF Sackos everywhere. Our website is the fantasy football com. We will be posting weekly rankings. Um, I'll probably we'll try to get some more articles up. We've been a little lax in that department, but um, we're going to try to post some weekly waiver advice, who you should go pick up, how much fab you should spend. And yeah, that's, uh, that's all I got. Alex, anything else? Football is coming soon. And Alex's singing is ending now. Good night. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.